absolutely delicious. Wow. It kind of boggles you a little bit. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Like, it's unfamiliar and it's just like, what? Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. That's too much. It's almost like this is your four piece band and this is your orchestra. It is almost a little bit like um, the wood was starting to decompose a little bit. <laughs> oh, true. Like pickle. Yeah. You could get kidnapped and you're like, that <laughs> yeah. wasn't worth it. <laughs> So I've got Henwood here from uh, Eat, Smoke, Drink. He's brought his uh, nice whiskey. I've brought my cheap whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, um, it's, it's always good to get this kind of comparison, right? And this is a 31-year-old Glengarry, um, but it's 49.1%. And so that's, despite the age old share, it's still 49%. It's car strength. Straight from the barrel mm. um, versus, obviously, um, a 12-year-old is hundreds of barrels mixed together to create this batch of similar ABVs, but a very different approach. Mm. And I think it'll be exciting to side by side the two. I mean, I just want to first note as well, look how yeah. ridiculous this box is. It's a like, great like, box. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> this is what you get when you uh, go to that, that high level, as opposed to your more, your cardboard carton kind of uh, box you get from your typical whiskey store or supermarket depending on where you are in yeah, the world. Yeah, I guess it's part of the experience, like people will buy this and want that experience, I mean some I guess. Um, you know, because some people will see a whiskey like this and go, why on earth would you ever spend this much money on a whiskey when I can just go buy the 12 year old, like why would we buy that? That's probably the, the question of the century really, like what makes an older whiskey better yeah. than a younger whiskey? Um, is older whiskey better than younger whiskey? No, I don't think it necessarily is better. But what is your definition of better, right? So let's forget about cost. The two whiskies will be miles apart in terms of texture, mouthfeel, complexity, um, and just general flavors. So you can't cheat the system. Although some distilleries try to, you can't cheat the system. Time will give you that flavor. Mm. And um, today, hopefully, I'll be able to demonstrate that. Because, um, I mean, how much is that bottle? So this was about 85 New Zealand dollars, and I'll put the um, pounds and US dollars up on the screen. Cool. So this is about, from memory, it was about seven, eight hundred, seven, eight hundred New Zealand dollars. Mm. So that's a huge difference. That's, that's, yeah. a, ten, that's a 10x difference. difference, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. huge, that's huge. Yeah. Is it um, 10x better? <sighs> no. <laughs> No. I can tell you now, it's not. Yeah, yeah. It won't be 10x better. Mm. Um, and this is where it's kind of crazy because when you drink this kind of whiskey, it's like, it is kind of drinking a bit of the past and the history and a bit of that as well. I know it's a bit yeah. of a romanticized, romanticized idea, mm. um, but it's not, but that's that's really what it is. You're drinking a part of, well, it's, it's three decades old. Yeah, it's definitely. three decades old. Yeah. But also, when you get to about 25, ish in age, um, you start to find there are really weird flavors that come out of the barrel that only time can can release. Um, and that stuff is like tertiary flavor, so you find it in wine as well. So they mm. call it tertiary flavors, where earthiness becomes mushroomy and fungal, and um, leatheriness becomes creamy or what, whatever, you know, like basically the sharp, strong flavors that this will have, mm. should have, when it gets to this, it kind of breaks down into its more basic form. Like, you know, one flavor becomes three flavors. You're not gonna be able to like find some of those notes you get on a 31 year old just randomly on some 12 year old. Like, yeah, it's gonna take that time in the cast to really pick up all those kind of nuances and complexities 100%. that you can only really get with those age. So yeah, it's time. Yeah. It's just literally time. I mean, you can't, I mean, there are distilleries out there that air condition their warehouses. Right, yeah. And so they, um, four times a day, they'll increase the temperature and decrease it to try oh, and make really? the barrels, yeah, to try right. and make the barrels squeeze the juice out in and out because that's yeah. really what you're doing. But what you get then is a major imbalance of flavor. Mm. I mean, most of the time when I've had a whiskey like that, and I won't mention any names, um, but it tastes like bloody nail polish. Because <laughs> you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. that's too much. You yeah. know, like you should have, you know, so that's... It's sort of similar to what happens in a lot of hog countries, you know, like a lot of American whiskey saying, oh, this is equal to an 18 year old, even though it's three year old, but yes. actually, are you re is it really tell the whole picture of what really happens in the cask with age and with 
the TOR and the temperature and all that sort of thing. Exactly, that's a thing. And people will argue that because from a marketing standpoint, or maybe even a scientific standpoint to a degree, um, you know, you can claim that, but from what I've had, it doesn't quite stack up. You can taste it's been rushed. You can taste that it's just too much flavor, but without that mellowing and that mm. natural aging process. Like, mm. I mean, um, I've had whiskies around about the 27, 28 plus year mark that tasted like almost a little bit like um, the wood was starting to decompose a little bit oh true like pickle <laughs> yeah, and yeah. that's really weird people go why would you want to drink that i'm like because it's cool you know <laughs> <laughs> so interesting yeah it is because it's like you, know, you don't get that yeah. with 10 year old 11 or even 12 no. 15 year olds right yeah. so you're getting something completely different it's uh, you're basically walking down a whole new alleyway it's like traveling it's going to that place that's like nothing else and if you're willing to go down there and you're willing to spend their money and it, it can be really exciting 100%. Yeah. 100%. It's like, um, yeah, that's probably the best way of doing it. You can just stay in the main street and drink what everyone else is drinking. Mm. Um, but then sometimes, you know, it carries a little bit of risk. You go to the side and you go, wow, that's the best thing I've ever had. Yeah. You know, yeah. because, you know, but then it could also work the other way. Yeah. You could get kidnapped and you're like, that wasn't <laughs> worth it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> your kidney gets taken. Exactly. You yeah. wake up in a bathtub full of ice and you're like, Nah. You know, this is not a whiskey, I think, that's sort of targeted at your, like, your, your people just want to mix it with drink, with Coca-Cola and stuff. I still Definitely think not. this is going to be a really nice dram, I think. That's a sipping whiskey. Yeah, it's yeah. a sipping whiskey. So this is yeah. what's going to be interesting is that yeah. how does a, a good sipping whiskey compare against the Super Saiyan level version of that? Yeah. 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 Well, let's find yeah. out. Yeah, let's do it. Let's pour a healthy pour because vitamin W is a... Essential, essential amino acid. Color wise, you can't really tell a difference. Um, you know, there's not a huge difference in color. The younger and there's that, they almost look, they're really similar. Similar, yeah. So I would say that's not even, that, that won't be colored because it's probably part sherry cast that one as well, which um, immediately adds color. Yeah. Is it part sherry? Yeah, it's part sherry. Yeah. So uh, marriage of bourbon and sherry cask, yeah. so. Oh wow. With a 12, it's you immediately get like a, a new make. I call it a new make, like a, almost like a passion fruity, um, which is really a non-contacted spirit, right? So like it's it's um, when the when the spirit and the barrel has not really had a chance to mingle so much yet, mm. and you get that spirit smell, like overripe fruit smell, um, and that's what you usually attribute to um, new make spirit. So new make spirit when you drink it, uh, when you smell it. It's very banana, like a sharp, overripe banana, mm. um, passion fruit. And that's not a bad thing. So that's not a criticism of the quality. It is just a property. Yeah. Right. So some whiskies actually do really well with that. Like peated, young peated whiskies are excellent because there's just, you know, a mouthful. And then I'm getting oh. sort of like a, almost a burnt fudge or something. And that's probably maybe that's that sweetness coming in. Yeah. On the 12, I'm, I'm, I know what you're saying about the burnt fudge, almost like a a slight smokiness to it, um, but that, yeah. that's, um, I'm getting like a, almost like a raspberry cordial, like that raspberry powder cordial. And then when you go to the 31, you get a much more like sickly, caramely, and I, I mean the bourbon influence on that is so pronounced, a slight creaminess. There's almost like an apple skin there that I'm not getting on the 12. What I wonder is actually after a bit of time, how this might change as well. I mean, that's the other thing about a lot of these old ones. They've probably been in the cask for a very long time. Yeah. They've probably been sitting there. Some of the complexity will might have different layers as we go through this draft. And that's another thing as well. So with, with younger whiskies, they, they'll take them from the barrel and they're probably going to be 65%, 67% at 12 years old, right? Um, and they will water them down to 40 something. Um, and when you water down a whiskey, it can make it or it can break it, um, or it could just make it easier to drink. Mm. So when you, I find out when I put water in whiskey is that it's a bit, it's a bit hidden mess. Sometimes it ruins it. I stopped doing it because I don't want to risk ruining it. I just yeah. want to drink it as is. Yeah. You're getting a 65% whiskey that's watered down um, versus natural um, ABV from the cast that's been put in there. Some components of the flavor in, the particles of flavor, let's say, or whatever it is, they're all condensed in this bottle um, without any separation of water. Well, this one, all of the flavors, the 65%, all of that flavor has been diluted for the percentage. So yeah, right. alcohol is like the glue of flavor. I would try the 31 first and 
um, a lot of people out there will always go the youngest to the oldest, but um, from what we've had in our tastings is that we always go for the most premium and the most older whiskey, the oldest whiskey first, because oh. more likely than not, they're going to be much softer, much more mellow. That way you can also have context on the difference between the premium, the most premium one of the lot, mm. and you go down to the um, cheaper one, right? So I reckon we do that. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to three decades in a barrel. Three decades. Wow. That is like, Ugh. from the front of the palate, the middle of the middle of the palate, the back, it's the whole length is there. There's no, the whole shit. There's bag. nothing missing. Nothing missing. Nothing missing. Oh, that's lovely. It's it is really lovely. Good. It is lovely. And, and and this exercise can ruin you as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you do yeah, too yeah. much. And so you See always you have to go. <laughs> you always have to go back to normal whiskies mm. because if you get used to the older whiskey or the, the more premium whiskies, yeah. Uh, you know, your 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 bank balance better be out of cash, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because if it can't, then you're it's game over. A floral bouquet out of that one actually. Um, but generally fruity though, silky smooth, like silky, the mouthfeel is just nice and waxy, absolutely delicious. Another thing as well is the finish, you don't get like a, a kind of like an astringent finish that lingers, it's like, you can still taste the sweetness, you can still taste a little bit of that fruitiness that stays in your palate. Um, mm. And that's a bit of a symptom of the older whiskies is that you get that, it progresses and it builds and it stays. Um, let's try the 12 and see how it compares. Yeah. Now, that's interesting because, yeah, I mean, uh, for all intents and purposes, I would say that they're both the same ABV. Just so people know, we've got, yeah, this is a 48% and that's a 49.1%. So actually quite close to an ABV. But when you, when you have a sip of the 12, the finish just isn't, isn't there, mm. Compa comparatively. The difference is, this is, it almost feels like it's so light. I don't know if it's a flavour note, or if it's more just about the texture. Mm. Like there's something like a mineral, almost like, it reminds me of when you, with some Pinot Noirs, there's a minerally kind of note to it. Mm. Whereas, yeah, the 31 year old, that's just sitting there. Flowers. It's camping out. Caramel. <laughs> like flavour just, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree, yeah. And then the aftertaste as well, it doesn't linger so much. No. By having that one first, it's highlighted. We still know that all the notes we're getting from that, which we'll also be getting in this, but it's highlighted those things that are slightly different. Especially, not in just in terms of the notes and what flavours we're getting, but yeah, in the terms of the mouth feel and your palate, what it's doing. Wood sherry cask, sherry helps hide new make. When you've got a young whiskey, you're always gonna get new make. No matter how, you know, how you think it's, you know, really delicious and it can be, you're always gonna get more of a new make taste. You're, it's, it's more prominent now because we've got two that are literally three times the age, but sherry a lot of a lot of mass produced non-single barrels are sherry because sherry is so quaffable mm. you know you just have it and it's like wow that's tasted it's sweet it's like yeah. fruit spice uh, fruit cake spice mm. um and it helps it helps mellow um it helps mellow that young spirit yeah that harsh that harsh sharp spirit that yep. can often be um i just got a bottle recently which is a new make and yeah it's 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 sharp, you know, it's, it's straight off the still, and uh, yeah, it's made me respect more what a barrel actually does to a whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely appreciate it, don't it's you? Moonshine. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's moonshine versus something else. Yeah. yeah. What, I, what I find with the older expression is that um, you do struggle to pick individual flavors. Mm. And that's a, a sign that I guess it's more cohesive, maybe. You're smelling something pleasant, but it's hard to pinpoint every single flavor. But with this one, you can separate them because it's, it's like straight that, away, yeah. Ooh, the alcohol spike, and you go, oh, oh, that's a new make there. And you go, oh, that's the fruit roll. And yeah, you know, but with this one, it's kind of like a mix of flowers in a fruit basket with some wood. And it's so hard to articulate. Um, and that's just the cohesion of the flavors over the years and it's almost like this is your four-piece band and this is your orchestra it is and that's actually the best way to do it put, put it yeah yeah and shit. if like yeah, if, you, if you're listening to like a big classical song or you know even something like Hans Zimmer or something big and you're trying to pick out those individual instruments you'll yeah never it's, hear it. it's harder yeah. yeah you'll never hear it because but they're all there subconsciously yeah. doing their thing yeah that's actually we're here like putting it. Yeah. guitar and drums <laughs> yes definitely <laughs> In conclusion, when you try the two, and from my standpoint, is 
I never say that is a, a bad whiskey at all. I mean, if I'm going to be neutral about it, that's a hell of a sipping whiskey. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. would I put ice in it? I don't think I would. Um, yeah. But I don't think ice would be too bad for it because, mm. um, like, you're not going to lose too much of those subtle orchestra-like flavors with ice. You're going to get the gist of it, right? Yeah. The bulk of it. Yeah. Um, so I think that that could be all right with ice as well if yeah. it's a hot weather country. I'm thinking this might be in my top five for those affordable go-to age statement kind of whiskies. It's it's very nice. It's very good. But obviously, this is my favorite by, oh, well, <laughs> by a long yeah. shot. It kind of boggles you a little bit. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Like, it's unfamiliar and it's just like, what is this? And it's all unfamiliar because I don't drink this every day. It's not my no. everyday dram. This is one like yeah. you set aside time for and mm. it's, a, it's a Saturday night. You set aside time and this you sit with like just a dram for that whole night. See how it changes. See yeah. what happens to it. Context is key um, to whiskey. Like if, if you just had this, you'll go, oh, that's good. And if you had this in a separate day, go, oh, that's really good. Mm. But if you have both of them, then you have context. What is better? Doesn't yeah. mean they're not both good. Yeah, yeah. It just means that because there's context right now, that's better. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Like I said, I've had whiskies before that are older, and I'm like, I picked the younger one because mm. it was better. Like, you know, um, there is a, a unicorn bottling, uh, uh, St. Magdalene's, which oh, yeah. is one of the most expensive bottlings around, and, like, you know, it's people just go hunger games for that stuff. What, what is that? Is it a closed distillery? It's a closed distillery, yeah. and it's like a unicorn status. And there's a 21 year old, I think, and a 19 year old, and everyone consensus is like 19 year olds better. Hey, interesting. So, you know, yeah. you can't say old is always better. It's, it's an individual barrel, individual whiskey, or individual blender. The other thing about old whiskies is that, sure, they might be more expensive, but often with a lot of things, even, I mean, take art, for example, it's often the story behind it. And so, you know, this whiskey can take you back to a place and time yeah. where the distillery was at at that time. Maybe it was even a different owner. It was a different master distiller. Yeah, um, definitely. And or then, different different methods of um, of malting, and that story, you know, what's that story worth? You know, it can be more expensive because it, it's rare, it's old, but also because it tells you that story, and that's why, you know, you get to try things that give you that little snapshot. But absolutely delicious, mm. absolutely delicious. I think we should just have a little bit more. <laughs> I think we should. More. <laughs> why not? Definitely. Just a little. I nip. guess I can force nip. them down. Yeah. I guess I can force just, them just down. Just one little nip. <laughs> why not? Mm. Any excuse to try something ridiculous like that, I love it. It's an orchestra. It's just that's yeah. that's brilliant. I will actually use that because <laughs> it's just like it's everything put together that creates an awesome tune. Mm. But it doesn't matter what individual instruments are. It's yeah. just it's just really really good. If you want to find out more about these types of whiskies or some of the things that we've talked about on this episode, go to the channel Eat Smoke Drink. Uh, he's got all sorts of great stuff on there, great content. Delicious. Anyway. Thank you for having me today. No worries. Um, <laughs> above all, share and enjoy. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.